How's it going, everybody? This is Reed from OBL. Going to be taking you all through custom behavioral events in HubSpot. This is a marketing hub enterprise feature that has been around for a while, but really gained a lot of functionality and is extremely useful now inside of the HubSpot product. Going to be going over a use case of a product-based company that wants to track events inside of their product, send it to HubSpot and be able to do uh, specific things on those events and physically just be able to see what a customer of theirs is doing in their product. So to physically get to behavioral events, we get a reporting, data management, custom behavioral events. These are my three uh, behavioral events that I've created so far, um, but you can create up to 100 of these events. And in my use case, I'm going to be just like a general product where we you can create assets in our product, share them or delete them as kind of the three main things you can do in, in this product. So we have a created asset, we have a shared asset, and we have deleted asset as our behavioral events. These can be created through the UI. Now, this used to be an API only capability, but we can actually create these events using, a, depending on what the type of event is, if it's a um, something that is being tracked on your website specifically, you can use the Visual Builder or the uh, JavaScript code. If you're sending events from like a third party system or an internal tool or something like that where you don't have access to the HubSpot tracking code, that's where you want to send via API. And that's actually what I did um, for this example. And just to show some of the stuff you can do when you generate these, um, we're going to do a send via API one. You would give it a name. So we're just going to call it test CBE. You can choose what to associate to. Generally, this will be contacts, but you can associate this to any type of object and custom objects. And by default, you have 32 properties that HubSpot will track automatically. Again, if this is an event being sent through the API, this, this data ne won't necessarily be um, what you actually want to track because a lot of this is uh, conversion information, page titles, things like that, where if you're sending from a database or uh, another SaaS application or your internal thing, you might not have access to that data. So you get the ability to now also create additional custom properties. So I can say I want a custom property called, um, let's just say asset name. And now there is a custom behavioral event property called asset name where we could pass in data um, so that you can see instead of HubSpot. So we'll just go ahead and do that and create it. We get a code that can be used to the API. And now we have another behavioral event created. Just as a general uh, view perspective, if we go to contacts and we go to a contact here, in our activity uh, feed, behavioral events is one of the uh, options that you can see or, or hide here. So I have set a behavioral event for created an asset in product for this contact already. And any of the properties that are filled out will also show up in the event. So I just filled out one custom property called asset name, and the asset name was reads test asset. But if this event had a lot more uh, properties or data with it, this would show that data here. So this by itself, a great example of where, all right, maybe this isn't uh, something that can really be tracked in a property because it happens often and, and we need to see when it happened and how often it happens and um, how it changes over time potentially. So it's not really a great use case for a property. Uh, this is where a behavioral event could really come, in, come into play. So we can see the behavioral event here as kind of our first thing. Where really the, the power comes in is when we go to workflows. So if we go to a workflow, um, and I have one created already, but I'm just going to go ahead and show from the start. If we do a contact-based workflow and we set up the triggers, we have the ability for when an event occurs to be a trigger. And I'm now going to go back to the workflow that I've already kind of generated here. But I have a trigger where... Uh, having completed the custom behavioral event is the workflow trigger. 
So now we can say, when someone has created an asset in product, trigger this workflow to then do all the great things that HubSpot can do. So from here, we could send an internal uh, email to ourselves that this person created an asset. This They could enroll in a sales sequence. We could do specific updates to uh, CRM records or send out a marketing email to them, add them to a marketing campaign, do data ops things. So all of the awesome HubSpot workflow features are now possible triggered from an event that happened off a uh, platform. And another kind of common thing we'll see in products and um, like onboarding, for instance, is for a user to truly be onboarded, they, needed, they need to do X, Y, and Z in our product. And then we consider them like an activated uh, customer, for instance. So maybe the common uh, flow and the thing for a customer to actually be considered an onboarded customer is they need to create an asset and they need to share the asset. And that's where um, delays can come into handy as well. So from here, we can say, all right, they, complete, they completed the created asset in product, which is the first possible thing they can do. The second possible thing they can do in product is then um, share a share the created asset. So we can do a delay here and we can say, I want to delay until an event occurrence for the contact in this workflow and then wait for them to do another custom behavioral event. So we're just going to say this and we're going to say asset title is known for example here. And we're going to wait one day. This could be days, hours, minutes, whatever it is, and we're going to save this. So now contact creates an asset and product, triggers this workflow. We're now going to wait one day until um, one day for them to share the created asset. If they um, do share the created asset in within that one day, they'll then go into the criteria met. If they don't, then we'll, they'll go into not net. So this is a great example of, okay, customer created the asset, but they didn't share it. So they got stuck in our onboarding flow somewhere. Let's send them an email saying, uh, this is how you actually share the asset, do X, Y, and Z to do, do the thing. From here, you could then uh, delay again. So we could send an email and then uh, delay again for the event to occur again, as an example. So really powerful kind of, product-based uh, flows here, product and event-based flows that, that can be used to really power your sales, marketing, internal efforts um, for things that are happening off-platform. But really, that's all kind of I wanted to show today. HubSpot has uh, really improved the functionality of custom behavioral events over the past few months, and I think they're going to continue to do so. So really excited about the future and kind of the additional things that will pop up over time. But if you're interested in learning more about these or need help configuring or thinking through the best strategy, obviously feel free to reach out to OBO. And we'll have some um, HubSpot knowledge base articles in the description to take a look at as well.